Hello everyone. Welcome to Informatica support video. This is Pragya Varma from Informatica GCS. In today's video, we'll talk about how to parse the API with the body request of type form data and response of type text content in CDI. The agenda for today's video will be, we'll discuss what is REST API, how we can consume this API call in IECS, what is REST V2 connector and swagger file, what are the supported media type in IECS, Along with that, we'll give you the brief about what is multiple part form data and application form URL encoded media type. At the end, we'll have a demonstration on how to parse the API with the request body of type multiple form data and response of type text in ISCS. What is REST API? A REST API is also known as a RESTful API and is an application programming interface that confronts to the constraint of REST architectural style and allows for the interaction with the RESTful web services. REST stands for the representational state transfer and communicate via HTTP requests to perform the standard database functions like CRUD, that is creating, reading, updating, and deleting the records within a resource. When a client request is made via RESTful API, it transfers a representation of a state of the resource to the requester and to the endpoint. This information is delivered in one of the several formats via HTTP, that is JSON, HTML, XML, or the plain text. As we all know, JSON is the most general popular file format to be used in such calls. How we can consume this API call in ISCS? A user can test this API call outside the ISCS using some external REST client like Postman. Once the API is successful, in the external tool like Postman, they can consume the same API in IECS using the rest v2 connector and the generating the swagger file. You can generate the swagger file in IECS using the swagger utility and can call the same swagger file in the rest v2 connection. Now we'll understand what is rest v2 connection and the swagger file. User use this rest v2 connector to interact with the web service application that is built on the rest architecture. User can use this REST V2 connector in a source transformation, target transformation, or in a midstream by making use of a web service transformation. We can use this REST V2 connector midstream in a mapping to parse single or multiple requests to the web service application and process the response data. For the REST V2 connector, you must need to specify the path of the Swagger file that defines the REST service while configuring the connection. You can generate this Swagger file using the IEC Swagger utility and suppose the Swagger specification version of 2.0. You can user can generate a Swagger file in an IECS by two methods. One by sending an API call to the service using a sample request and other by if the user doesn't have a permission to send an API call to the service, they can generate a Swagger file using a sample request and by uploading the response, they'll make sure that without submitting an API call. What are the supported media type in ISCS? ISCS CDS support the following media type currently. That is application XML, application JSON, application form URL encoded, JSON subtype, JSON constant type, and extended JSON MIME type. Currently, we don't support the application opted stream or the CSV format as a content type in ISCS. What is multiple part form data and application form URL encoded media type? Both multiple part form data and application form URL encoded are main type and used for sending the form data from a client to a server over HTTP. However, they are being used for different use cases and should be chosen based on the specific requirements of the application. Multiple part form data is used when a form contains the binary data such as a file uploads. In this format, each form field is represented as a separate part of a request body. Each part includes a header that specifies the field names and the content type followed by the actual data. This form can handle a large files and complex data structure, but this is less human readable than the application form URL encoded media type and requires more processing on the server side. Application form URL encoded, on the other hand, is a default content type used for the XTML forms, 
in this format the form data is encoded as a query string of the key val key value pairs separated by and characters it is suitable for small amount of data such as text field check boxes and radio button so basically multiple part form data is ideal for sending non sky or binary data and is the only content type that's allow you to upload the files if you have a binary or non alpha numeric data or significantly sized payload to transmit you can use the multiple part form data as a media type otherwise user can go with an application form url encoded as a media type in summary we can say that we use the application form in url encoded for a simple text based data and multiple part form data for a binary data or the complex structure So we'll move towards the demonstration where I'll show you how to consume the API that is having a request body of type multiple format and give the response of text in the postman and similarly how we can pass the same request in an ISCS. I'll log into my postman. So this is my postman where I'm making a post call and this is my API. It has a body of type form data where I'm passing the key as text and the value respective is value if i make a call for this particular api call it will give me the response of type text for that i'll save this response to a file i'll save it as a multi part form we can give any name to it once the response is saved we'll make a change in the response i'll open the response file meanwhile this is my response looks like we need to save this response in a json format for which i'm adding some curly braces before and end of this response defining the value within a quotes giving a key of any name i'm giving it as token over here once it is done you can save again as a dot json format so this is our response i have saved it out now we'll log into our iscs to create a swagger file i will log into my iscs once we are logged into an iscs and we will go navigate to the administrator page and there will go for the swagger file option i have navigated over here to create my swagger file i'll click on new option here we can create a swagger file we can give our verb which we want to use url raw body and even the response as well i'm specifying the name of the swagger file as a swagger multiple form i'll select my runtime environment I'll copy the URL from my postman. I'll keep it till dot net over here and give rest of the part in the base part. Select my verb. Go down. As my API was having raw body, I'll give the raw body. So. before passing the raw body we need to select the accept type and content type so what is content and the accept type so accept type and content type are the http headers that are used to specify the format and the type of data being sent or received in the http request or the response the content type header is used to request to indicate the format or the type of data that is being sent in the message uh, message body it is specify the mean type of the data that such as uh, text html application json image or multiple part form data among others the server uses this content type header to determine how to pass the data in the request body similarly the accept header is used to request to indicate the format or the type of data that is client is willing to accept in the response it will specify the mean types that the client supports such as text html application json and anything else to indicate that the client accept this type of an response 
So for us, our response was in a text format, but here we see only we have two options. So I'll go with JSON option. Even our content type, our request body was a threat of a type multiple form data, but we don't have an option to define a multiple form data. So we'll go with form URL encoded for now. I have a raw body with a type multiple form data in my postman and where we have a key and value of type uh, text and value. So we, we need to define the same thing in this swagger file. As we don't have an option to select the multiple form data, I have selected the application form URL encoded for the content type. That is my request. Now, for the content type as a form URL encoded, we have an, a specified format to specify the raw body. That is something in the form of A colon B. So I'll give my value like A colon B for this API call. Post this, I'll upload the response. And before that, I'll define the operation ID to understand what type of operation we are performing. I'll make it something like multiple part request. Now I'll upload the response. As I mentioned in my PPT saying that there are two ways. One way is either we can give all these calls detail and generate a swagger file. Other way is we can also post and upload the response so that it can understand what is the accept type and what is the content type we are trying to do it and try to generate the swagger file based on the structure and the response we are uploading over here. Once we are done with this, we'll save it. My swagger file has been saved now. I'll go and download my swagger file. This is my swagger file. My swagger file looks like this, where we can see this is our API call. Here, if you see here, we are defining the consume as this, produce as this. And we have a value that is in inform data. We have to edit this swagger file in order to parse the request body of type multiple form data and accept type as text content. So for that, in place of this, I'll pass it as multiple part form data. And here I'll give it as all. Once done, we don't need to make any changes in this because this is already considering the field as an inform data. Once we are done with this, we'll save the swagger file. I have saved the swagger file and I'll place the swagger file my, on my agent server. So I have placed my modified swagger file in my agent machine. Now I'll create a new connection. I'll go to connection and click on new. So this will open a new wizard to create a new connection. So once the new wizard is open, we'll give the name of the connection and the type of connection. So our type of connection is rest v2. I'll select rest v2 over here. Give the name of the connection, something like Okay, now I'll select my runtime environment. Give the authentication as standard. I need to specify the file path of the swagger file. So I'll take the path from here where I have placed my swagger file. We specify the path. Here we need to give the file name as well, the swagger file name, along with the extension. So I'll take the complete name of the swagger file and specify it over here. Once done, we'll test the connection and save it out. So my connection is being created now. We'll use this connection in the mapping. So this is the connection created and saved. Now we'll navigate data integration page to create a mapping. I click on new, go to mapping to create a mapping and click on create. Give name as multiple form. I select the source as the same connection. So 
select my connection then I'll select the operation that we have selected once done we'll go to the query option to see what is the request needed as we have passed the raw body I'll take the format from here and if you see here it is looking for our raw body value that we need to give give it as value over here once this will validate our request message showing us valid we'll save it out click on ok once done we'll go to the field mappings and map the required data so if here I want to map the response and the respective descent this is done I'll increase the precession of the token from here to 1000 as my value is higher once done we'll map it with the target I'll use target as a flat file I'll create a flat file at the runtime this is something like target And click on OK. This is done. I'll save this mapping. So our mapping is safe. I'll create a mapping task on the top of this mapping. Give some name to it. Select my runtime environment over here and click on finish now my mapping task is also being created I'll run this to see how the data is getting processed I'll go to the my, my jobs to see how the data is getting processed I have initiated this process it's on a starting up state job is running let's wait for it to get completed see here the job has been completed we'll download the session log to see if the data is being processed correctly or not I have opened the session log. You can see here this is the session log of the task. I scroll down to see if the data has been processed. So it is reading the value. And uh, if we check here, yeah, I can see that if you see here, it has made the call of a multi part request and response is 200 OK. And this is the value. It seems like it has read half of the value and some of them are being truncated. No issue in it. In that we can increase the size of that uh, token and we can read all the data so if I if you if you verify from here it started from ASI and sending something from here so in our postman as well this is the response which we have obtained seems like it is being obtaining and reading the response which we are getting so this way you can generate that uh, swagger file and modify the swagger file and consume the same API call in ISCS with a modified swagger file you can refer our Informatica knowledge base or can check our online help documentation for more information. Also, we would like to hear back from you and you can share your feedback and reviews and write us to us on support videos .com. and also you can do a tweet to us on Infosupport as well. Thank you everyone. Thanks for your time.